Last year I had a DCR TRV250 digital 8 camcorder donated to my channel and the problem with the 250 is it does not play back analog tapes which is kind of useless. I need something that plays analog tapes. And I just had an idea today that I might be able to make that happen. So let's see what I come up with. I've talked about this before, about the difference in the, the digital eight and analog eight camcorders and how some of them can only play tapes recorded in digital eight and will not play analog eight. A prime example is this one here. This is a DCR TRV 250. It is digital 8 only. It will not play analog tapes. This is a DCR TRV 240, and this one will play analog and digital 8 tapes. So obviously the 240 is a much more desirable camera to have because it can play both formats. I have another TRV 240. This one here, the mechanism is bagged on, and we actually pulled the head out of this before. Um, this one here is in, not in good shape. It's got pieces missing from the chassis. But the chassis itself is the same between this one and this one. So I'm thinking maybe I can pull the chassis from this unit and put it into this one and make another camcorder that will play and to play analog and digital tapes. So let's try it. This one was donated by a, a viewer and a basic chassis is exactly the same between the two. So it should be relatively easy, I think, to, uh, to switch them over. So I'll pull out the, the screws that hold the unit together. take this unit completely apart and um, see if I can go about swapping the mechanism. I, I think the mechanisms are the same. I might be wrong. They might not be, but I think they are the same. I'll know once I get in whether the, the connectors and everything line up um, between the two of them. So we'll tear this one down first. Of course, the name of the game here, of course, is to try to have as many players that will play analog tapes as possible because of course the the high eight and the regular eight format was a much more popular format over the years so there's tons of tapes in the analog formats so having a camcorder that only plays the digital tapes is kind of not as desirable just because if you've, got a, if you've got one that will play both, then why have one that only plays one format? Right? Better to have a camera that will support both. So I'm going to remove all the screws. I was thinking at first I might be able to just swap circuit boards, but that is probably not an option because I bet you the boards are different. But but the chassis itself might be the same. And that's what I'm hoping, is that the, the guts will be the same. So I'll pull this one apart, and then I'm going to pull the other one apart so that I can actually do a direct comparison between the two. Once I've got the, the, the side covers off, we can look and see. Um, how much alike they are and how much different they are. So there's that one apart. Now let's take apart the other one. It's already half a, half apart already. I 
I think the boards are, are considerably different though, like the layout of the boards and probably the size is different as well. But the mechanism itself is likely the same. Okay. <clears throat> Gotta get all the arrow mark screws out and then the camera should pop apart. I know this one is kind of tough to take this nose cone off and they when they let go they they really fly. A couple more screws on the bottom on this one. And anyways to say only one of these is gonna go back together. The uh, the 240, if it'll go back together with the 250 chassis. Separates and one more screw right here. Okay, so that's the side cover for that one. <clears throat> As you can see, the circuit boards themselves are, are completely different between the two, which was expected. Some things are going to be similar, like the connectors that the drum plugs into on the top, they're all the same. In fact, that part looks identical. Um, so let's uh, let's take the board off on this one. We'll undo this one. It's, I, I haven't put all these connectors back together because this was this was taken apart before to to seal the drum out of it a while back. The reason the drum is missing out of this one is this one was brought to me at the same time as that GVD two hundred. Uh, we were going to try to pull the drum out of this and fix that one last year. And once I got the drum out, I realized that the the uh, flexible PC connectors were going the opposite direction so this one was just left as a scrap unit that we're gonna try and get going today it comes apart and there is a screw down here somewhere I know I'm missing a screw where is it Right here. 
the uh, eyepiece has to come out. this one. Might be both of these two screws. There's another screw under here. The eyepiece comes off first. Yeah, and then there's another there's another screw right here. And this connector comes apart. Move the camera block. Okay, now the board should lift off of this one. So I gotta take all these screws out so that I can unbolt the chassis from the, uh, the camera body. So these screws have to come out to lift the board out of here. Uh, there's another, another connector down here I can take apart or just take off the entire uh, jack block and leave them plugged in. Might be just as easy just to take out this screw here, remove the USB and, and firewire. Now I can just lift this entire board out and unplug it. Okay, board is out of the way. Now I can unbolt the chassis. And lift the chassis off of the, uh, or lift the camera out of the, the camera chassis out of the, the rest of it here. Just like or the mechanism out of the camera, I should say. Now, I think the other chassis is the same as this, so we'll just stick that one aside. We'll just stick this piece aside, and then we'll do the same for this camera. We'll take this one apart, remove the viewfinder, unplug the power connector here. Can we see? I think this is this is the same. This is all the same. These connectors here, they're all the same. At least for this part, these are the same. Let's 
take off the viewfinder. Unplug the the deck. This one sure has a lot more plastic on it, that's for sure. But then again, it was it was built at the right at the end of the eight millimeter run, and they were just getting really, really cheap. This battery cover should lift out of here somehow. I got all the screws. I wonder if that screw has to come out, even though it's not marked, it might have to come out. Then again, maybe not. Oh, there's one more down here. There. Now this will lift off, and this will unplug. Now I should be able to remove the uh, remove the camera block and uh, then take the board out and then get the uh, get the chassis out. That's the whole idea. Camera block is off there. There should be another screw somewhere in here to hold it in place. Might be these ones. I think it might be these screws here that hold the camera block in. Hopefully I'm in frame. I'm not really looking at what I'm doing as far as the camera framing is concerned, so I hope I'm in frame. There, camera blocks out of the way. Now I should be able to remove the circuit board. Plug the loading motor. Okay, that board's out of the way. Now the screws to hold the chassis in, and we'll see in a minute whether it's going to be the same chassis. Fingers crossed that it is. It should be because Sony didn't make that many different chassis. They made a bunch of different cameras, but they a lot of them were were based on the same mechanism. 
and they only they only made a few different mechanisms over the years so there's this this whole block should just drop out now if I've got all the screws oh, one more I think this one screw here and then this whole block should drop out Okay, now let's take a look at the two mechanisms and see whether the two mechanisms are are similar. They look to be the same to me. Excellent. Let's uh, let's start putting this one back together. We take this bracket off just to make it easier. Lift out. This will make it just a little bit easier, I think, to set this in place. Got to get all the wires and stuff up, like the connector for the the loading motor and stuff. We can't have that sticking down. Get that out of the way. Half the, half the trouble is getting these uh, ribbon flex boards uh, to cooperate and go where you need them to go so that they don't get pinched and damaged because uh, they're very easy to damage these things. So you got to kind of work at getting them to go in the right place and not get caught on anything because if they get caught between a couple pieces of metal, they will get snipped very, very easily. So gotta be really careful with this part and that one's through and this one's through I think we got the chassis almost in not quite all the way down yet we're getting there and I think we got it I think we got it I got all my connectors through. That snap shut. I can put the screws back in to hold the chassis in place and start reassembling the rest of the unit.
I don't see if there's any other screws that hold this together. I think there's just the three of them. And that holds the chassis in like that. Okay, now I can start to put the, uh, the rest of this thing back together. Our side cover it goes on like this somehow that goes in like that there's a little switch that gets screwed back down to the chassis here put this in place That goes on like that, <clears throat> and there was a screw that goes into the plastic to hold this together. And there was a screw that holds this little switch in place. This is the detect if the, uh, I think it's if the cassette is open. Something like that, but there's a screw that holds this down. And now I can put the board back in. Time to reconnect the board. goes in there at the bottom. Get the board lined up, get the screws lined up. Get the four screws or whatever it takes back in. Plug all the connectors back in for the transport. And this one goes underneath here. Actually, both these have to go underneath. And I think I messed up on this. This one's got to go under this metal bar, not over it. Okay, I gotta fish that under. I'm gonna have to take this uh, side piece off again to do that, unfortunately. I don't want to risk damaging the ribbon, so this is the safest way to do it rather than try to fish it through without removing the side or the brake grip. Take that out of there. This wire has to go under this metal bracket because it's got a plug in here so I got to take that kind of we'll take this one off too just to make it a little easier okay now I can get that one under like this and plug it in put the put this connector in the back here this is for the loading motor get that one out of the way Get this one in here. Why should we go to all this work and have it not work? Might be something, wouldn't it? I don't know whether the board works on this camera. It was 
it was one that was given to me for parts because it was all it was in pieces and there was parts missing to it like the chassis is missing there's parts missing from the chassis guide was missing for one okay that's there put this piece back on again and set this screw back in place to hold this little switch in place. Plug in the connector, like that. Okay, the camera section can go back on now. I believe this was the right camera for this one. Or is it the other one? Where is the camera? Is it this one? I think it's this one. Let's just see where the... Uh, I've got two camera blocks here that look identical. Where is the uh, switch for the night shot? One of the switches on the top and the other one the switch was on the side. I think it's this one here. Yeah, this 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 one because there's the night shot switch there. The other one, the night shot, well, I guess, yeah, maybe they are the same. Similar but different. Just the way that they mount, one of them screws down. Yeah, this is the one here. The other one screwed in from the top. This one screws in from the side here. That's how you know which camera is which. And then the screw goes in on this side down here. It was a plastic screw that went in from this side. Other than that, they're very similar. Okay. One connector on the back to the CCD. And the other one went down here. Okay, that's got that together. Next is the uh, the cabinet. No, no, it's not the cabinet. It's the battery uh, battery cover and the uh, viewfinder. And again, these are these are totally different between the two of them. This is the one for this camera. You can tell by just the way it, it fits together. This piece slides in place like that. There's a plastic screw that goes through here to hold this piece together. Power cable. Plugs in there. Next is the left side panel. We've got two connectors to plug in. One down here. And one over here. And then the side, oh, <laughs> forgot about the viewfinder. Better put that in. Just undo this connector just to protect it. Viewfinder, viewfinder, which one is which? Viewfinder drops in place. A couple more screws to hold that in place. Thank you. 
And of course the viewfinder plugs in right here. other flat cable plugs back in here and then the left side cover will drop in place sort of like that Everything's lining up properly. And that shot works. Now I've got the front nose cone to go on plug in and then this thing will be almost ready for testing. Got to line up my plugs here so that they line up with the cabinet. We'll put the uh, front control panel on and uh, then we can uh, actually uh, test the unit because it will be ready to power it up and see whether it uh, does anything and more importantly will it play my tapes that's what matters right will it play tapes so I'll pop that on and I think I'm missing something here first I gotta put this piece on that has to go on first if I'm not mistaken And then this piece goes on. Like that. Okay, I don't even need to put the screws in now. I'm going to go get my adapter cord for the AV output and then we'll test it. Oops. You guys didn't see that. Okay, the moment of truth. Got a power adapter here somewhere. Got a power cord. Power it up in camera mode first. See if I get a picture on the TV. So when I turn it on, nothing happens. When I turn on the VTR mode, I hear it beep. I get a white screen. I see no output for the uh, the video on the monitor. Uh, let's just load a tape and see whether it'll play anything. Camera section's not coming on, but that might just be something loose inside. So let's just see first of all, is this thing going to play a tape? It's threading. That's a good sign. Let's see if it'll play. Okay, so there's... Well, that's good. Right, it plays an analog tape. That's an eight millimeter tape. Uh, is there anything on my viewfinder? The viewfinder is blank. The display button is not doing anything. Maybe something's not plugged in. That's what we can always hope that something's not plugged in right. Because the, the viewfinder here is blank. But 
I've got video coming out of the video output, so I know it plays back a tape. Let's just try high 8 and we'll try digital 8 and see whether it plays those formats too. Because remember, this is the chassis from the digital only machine. So here is a, um, a high 8 tape. I'll have to just investigate and see why the viewfinder is not working and why the camera doesn't turn on when I switch it to camera mode. But We've already created a playback machine, so we know that that part works. And it should switch over to, it's going to switch to, to high 8 mode now. And there's that high 8 tape. So that's playing. Next will be the digital 8 tape. and digital eight. So that works. So we're getting there. It plays back analog eight millimeter high eight and digital eight. That's good. So let's uh, pop the side off it again to see why that uh, LCD is not working and why it's not going into record. I'm thinking maybe a connector is not seated properly so we'll just close it down, take the power off and uh, we'll pop it apart again and just see why it uh, did not appear to be working correctly. Even where I am, I'm further ahead from where I was before because this unit did not work at all. The only thing that worked was that the, the, the uh, TRV250 worked as a digital 8 only camera and digital 8 playback only. So that worked. The camera worked on it but it uh, basically was just a playback machine for digital 8. It would not play analog. So I'm further ahead than it was before because I've now gained an analog playback machine. But I'd like to have this LCD uh, working on the side so we'll see why it's not working it's I'm hoping it's just that one of the connectors is not seated correctly because this is the plug here for it Oh, I can see why the viewfinder up top up top's not working because this is not seated properly. That might be why it wasn't working properly. This connector is not all the way in. Try that. Same with the camera. Is it seated? It is. So let's just try this again. Okay, we'll just give it power and see whether anything lights up different. Okay, now the eyepiece is lighting up. It says clock set. Camera's lighting up. Ah, I have a picture. Excellent. I think it was just that one connector wasn't seated properly. So let's throw this one back together. And uh, we'll give it another try. But I think I'm going to have success. I can smell the success. And if you can see me now, I'm grinning from ear to ear. Superimpose a big happy face uh, emoji on, on the picture right now on the screen. Yeah, I'm uh, at this point, I'm kind of happy. I'm stoked because, well, I just feel a little bit of accomplishment today for coming up with this idea. To make a hybrid to strip one camera and make another one work and make it work fully 
I will do a test recording on this one as well. And we'll make sure that everything is working when I get it all back together. Get a couple screws in here just to hold it sort of together. And then we'll complete a test. Record and play. Okay, I've got it loaded up with the tape. I'm going to, this is the tape that I, the, the digital 8 tape that I had some analog recordings on at the end of it. We're going to put it into camera mode. I'm just going to kill the sound on the TV so I don't get feedback because, you know, people just love to hear that noise. Into record mode. I have a picture on the screen. I have a picture here. And does the zoom lens zoom? Of course it does. Let's do a recording. So now we're making a recording on this digital 8 camera. And uh, I'll zoom it in, and I'll zoom it out, pan it around the workbench here so you can see that indeed here's the digital only board for the other camera that we, the, the donor camera. This is from the TRV 250. Extreme close up. Okay, let's. Uh, Let's play this back and see whether it uh, made a recording. It, it will have guaranteed it will have made a recording, but we'll find out pretty quick here. Let me just rewind the tape. Okay, this is going to be what was on the tape before I started the digital recording. So this is an analog recording that was done before and um, off of another camera. Really used like the first 10 minutes of the tape. So this is what's recording beyond that. And um, we're going to play this back now. Let me see how it reports. This is what's uh, on the monitor right now. So that's an analog recording I made before. And once this recording is done, then you'll see the recording. Okay, now it should switch. It'll switch over to digital 8 mode now. And there it goes, switching to digital 8. And that's what I made with this one. Digital 8 camera. And uh, I'll zoom it in. Oops, that was me pushing the button. And I'll zoom it out. I'm putting this thing together while I'm, while I'm playing this. The workbench here, so you can see that indeed here's the digital only board for the other camera that we, the, the donor camera. This is from the TRV 250. Extreme close up. Okay, let's. Uh, Let's play this back and see whether it uh, made a recording. Okay, well by now we know that it did make the recording. Everything played fine. So now I just need to put all the, the screws back into this one and I've now created myself another Digital 8 camera that will play analog recordings to add to my collection. As I say, the uh, the cameras were donated. They were broken, and they were donated. The one that came from a a, a, a viewer a while back. You probably remember the one. The guy that sent it to me sent it to me, and he nicely cut off the uh, the hand strap wherever it is. He cut the hand strap off because the the rubber on these ones all turns to crap after a while. That just the rubber falls off on it. So fellow that uh, is watching this he'll he'll remember he'll remember who he is i forget who it was but one of my viewers sent me the camera it was broken and he says here's here's something you can play around with and see if you can make it work and i did indeed make it work but it wasn't really much use because it, it was being a being a, a digital eight only playback it was uh, not really all that useful but now it is so i'm going to put this one back into my into service and use it for transferring tapes. Anyway, that's about all I can show you on this one. I don't think you guys need to see me putting all the screws back in. So we'll end this one now and uh, I'll say thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.